Hello again. Some of the most popular videos I've uh, posted so far have been on more circles. I think it makes sense to do one more, give you another uh, chance to uh, study this concept. What I've got here today is I've got a rocket, and it's a little rocket that's uh, got a thousand kilogram payload on one end, and of course the engine on the other end, and the in interior of the rocket is pressurized. And this is pretty typical. When you pressurize the fuel, it makes it easier to get it to the engine. And it also makes the, uh, the structure a little bit stronger. Now I've got a thousand kilogram payload being accelerated at eight G's, which is about right for a rocket. And what that means is since the, there's an acceleration, there's an, an inertial force going that way. Basically the, the structure of the rocket is being uh, compressed between the uh, uh, inertial force of the, the payload pushing back and the engine pushing forward. And since this is a thin walled pressure vessel, We've also got hoop stresses and longitudinal stresses. So that makes kind of an interesting stress field we'll look at. The diameter, the mean diameter is one meter. Mean diameter means halfway between the inside and the outside surfaces. And the wall thickness is two millimeters. And the interior pressure is 400 kilopascals. So it's about four atmospheres of pressure. And whatever I did with my marker, here it is. Um, let's t take a look at this. Also, we need to find something. So let's take a look and find what the maximum shear stress is. Now this is the big idea behind Moore's circle. If you look at this, it's obvious there's going to be a hoop stress that makes the, uh, uh, let me show you. This is, this is a thin walled pressure vessel. I have my refrigerator right here. Here's a thin walled pressure vessel. Remember hoop stress is the stress that makes the diameter want to get bigger and longitudinal stress is, the, is what makes the uh, pressure vessel, my Coke can want to get longer. Right? So the rocket's experiencing both of those. The stress in the y direction is the hoop stress. The stress in the x direction is the longitudinal stress which is compressive or tensile, uh, tensile longitudinal stress plus the compressive stress due to acceleration which is of course compressive. Right? There's no uh, externally created shear stress. There's nothing in this rocket the, 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 no external force is trying to twist the rocket, okay? So there's no tau xy. That doesn't mean there's no shear stress. This is the big idea behind Moore's circle. Stress is directional, okay? If I'm standing, let's say I could see stress. If I'm standing looking this way and I'm standing on some part, like a, I don't know, boat hull or something, and I'm looking that way, I'll see a certain stress. When I look this way, I'll see a different stress, okay? The fact that they're different this way and this way means stress is directional. Even if I don't move, even if I'm at the same point on a part or on some structure that's bearing a load, if I look different directions, there's different stresses. Therefore, it makes sense that there's going to be some direction where the stress is maximum. Now, this direction, there's no shear stress. There's compressive stress in this direction or tensile, one of the two. There's normal stress in this direction. There's normal stress in that direction. There's no shear doesn't mean there's no shear in any direction. There's going to be one in some direction. Let's find that. All right. So let's take a look at sigma y first since that's the easiest. That's going to be the hoop stress. Okay. And that's P D M over 2 T, which for us is 400 kilopascals and that's uh, newtons per meter squared. Mean diameter is one meter, that's easy, and two times the thickness, which is 0 0.002 meters. Now, it's good to keep your units consistent. I always mess up less often when I do that. You can also see there's a four there and a two and a two there, so it's going to be 10 or 100 or 1,000 somethings. And indeed, it comes out 100 megapascals. Now, let's take a look at longitudinal stress. All right. That's going to be just half the hoop stress, because longitudinal stress is PDM over 4T. All right? So it's just half of that, and that, of course, works out to be 50 megapascals. All right, let's see what my... Can I get this in here? I'm going to run out of room here. Let me write this up here. The last one I'm looking for is the normal stress, compressive stress, because of our acceleration. All right? Now that's simple. That's just F over A, where F is the force created by accelerating that mass, and A is the cross-sectional area of the load-carrying structure of the rocket. So that's M times A times the acceleration of gravity 
the area is going to be just the circumference, which is pi times the diameter times the thickness. Right? There we go. Okay, and if you work that out, that's a thousand kilograms. I'm running out of board here. Times eight times nine point eight one meters per second squared over pi times one meter times zero point zero zero two meters. Okay, that's that. There's the cross-sectional area again, and that works out to check my cheat sheet here. Uh, twelve point four nine megapascals, and that's compressive. Okay, remember. That's tensile, that's tensile, that's compressive, all right? Important uh, distinction there. So, so far we know, let's see, tau xy equals tau yx equals zero. Sigma y, we decided was what, 100 megapascals. Okay, and sigma x is going to be longitudinal stress minus that. And that works out to be 37.51 megapascals. So we've got all the information we need to, number one, draw stress element, and number two, we're going to uh, draw more circle. So I'm going to clear out some space here, and let's get to that. Yeah, let's see how I get rid of that. Actually, I don't really need that anymore either. I'll leave the rocket, I like that. Okay, so let's draw the stress element first. Okay, that's this box right here, just blown up big so we can really see it and write on it. Okay, there's the nominal directions of tau xy and tau yx, and those are both zero. Okay, sigma x. There's sigma y and sigma y. The values are right up there, so we know what this is. In this direction, there is no shear stress. That doesn't mean there's no shear stress in any direction. Now, let's talk about Moore's circle for a second. Moore's big insight, the idea he had that made this so useful, is that he was looking at the uh, equations that describe how you transform stresses as you rotate your stress element. And notice that if you plot in this axis, sigma tau, which is normal stress, shear stress axis, you can plot a circle. Okay, now remember, this is at a time when there was no computers, no calculators, everybody was working with drafting tools like rulers and compasses and slide rules. All right? If you could do meaningful calculations by drawing scaled pictures, accurately scaled pictures with a ruler and a, and a compass, that's huge. That makes a big difference in your life. It makes relatively complex calculations much, much easier. All right? So let's do this. Let's, let's uh, go through the process for more circle. First thing we're going to do is we're going to pl plot the normal stress and the shear stress from the x face. Then we're going to plot the normal stress and shear stress from the y face. Then we're going to draw more circle, and then we're going to figure out what the radius is. And the radius is uh, tau max. So let's see. That's I'm going to mark these off as each one of those is going to be 25 megapascals. So the x face um, sigma is what did we decide that was 37.51, and tau xy is zero. So let's call that right about there. Okay, that's x base 37.510. Okay, next thing I'm going to do is draw the stresses on the y face of my stress element. That's that face up there. And that's going to be sigma y, 100 megapascals. And tau y x is also zero. So that's 100. Zero. Okay, so 25, 50, 75, 100. So that's my Y face. Now, it just so happens that since tau XY and tau YX are zero, these points both lie on the uh, uh, horizontal axis here, on the normal stress axis. Okay, next thing I need to do, excuse me, is find the uh, mean stress. So sigma bar is 
sigma x plus sigma y over 2. So it's 137.51 over 2, and that comes out to 68.76. So 68.76 megapascals, which is going to be right about there. Let me draw this. 68.76 MPA equals sigma bar. There we go. Now, once you know the circle, or the uh, center of a circle, and two opposite points, you know basically the center of the circle and the radius. Once you know the center of a circle and the radius, you know everything there is to know about a circle. All right, so my, I'm going to try to draw this freehand. In fact, I'm only going to draw half of it. I, I can draw half a circle that makes, still kind of looks like half a circle. Point is right there, that is the radius. The okay, radius goes from there to there. That is the radius. Or the radius is, uh, let's see, sigma y minus sigma bar in this case. I can get away with this because there's no tau xy. So my radius is 31.24. Megapascals. So that's radius, that's also tau max right there. So I go over here, and that's actually pretty much to scale considering I freehanded this. 31.24 megapascals. So there we go. We've calculated sigma x, sigma y, drawn more circle, and found out that tau max, the maximum shear stress, is this. And because it happens at 90 degrees, and this angle in here, let me get rid of that, is 2 phi, that means that I have to rotate my stress element 45 degrees. If I rotate my stress element 45 degrees, that face right there, the x face, will be seeing 31.24 megapascals. So even though there's no tau xy and tau yx are zero, sigma max or tau max is not zero. That's tau max.